Welcome, friends. Hello, hello. And happy Friday. Okay, I think that sounds good. I was watching one of my VODs that I uploaded onto YouTube the other night. I think it was last night. I noticed that the volume of the background music was like a little too loud for my preference. So I'm just gonna make sure I turn it a little bit lower. Just for anyone that watches the video back. But yeah, welcome in friends. It's good to be back. And this is our like last weekend of cooking. So let's make the best of it. Hello, Sweden, Swede Dr. Plastic. Let's say it that way. Hello, Uncle Stinky. It's good to see you. Kimmers, thank you for being first. Flower, you made your own Christmas pudding this year. It was amazing. Was it difficult or is this something that you're going to do from now on? Mish, how are you doing? That is a valid complaint. Yeah, I don't think we're using any feta today, but maybe there's some in the salad. I don't know. Cookie, how are you? Hope everyone had a nice week. It went by so quick. I got like no downtime. It was so insane, but it's good. It's good. Being busy in like a good way is always, is always good, right? Yeah, I'm so excited for this menu today. I don't think it's gonna take us very long to cook any of this stuff. And that was kind of my plan um, because I am packing up my bags to go to work for two weeks. Up, uh, It's actually a super nice site. I thought I was like going to be at like, just like an oil field site, but it's actually a lodge where a lot of the workers stay. So we're like actually on a lake. It's called Christina Lake up in Northern Alberta. So I'm excited. I get to take a four and a half hour bus ride up there on Monday morning. Monday, right? Is the first, whatever January 1st is. And I have to be on the bus at six in the morning. Ugh, it's going to be so early, but whatever. It's two weeks. I already did talk to the lodge manager and stuff, which is like so different from any other camp I've gone to yet. So I'm actually like quite excited. Like she asked what I wanted to do because I'm going up as a second cook. So usually that would entail either you make sandwiches, salads, or you actually like help cook dinners and stuff like that. And I said I wanted to do salads or cooking as a preference, but like I didn't really care if I had to make sandwiches either. It at like this point it is going to be what it is, right? It's something new, so it doesn't really matter is what I told her. And she's like, oh, well, that's interesting. She's like, and just so you know, like if you don't like what you do this time, if you come back up, you can do something different next time. So what a different experience than any other camp from uh, what I've experienced. So I'm very, very excited and hopeful for what this is gonna be. And yeah, I'm so sore. I had to do a military physical yesterday just to get accepted to go to this job. Like it said I had to go do a drug alcohol test, fine, that is a-okay. And then it's like, this is also a fitness test, so make sure like you wear appropriate clothing. And that's all it said. Well, the fitness test was 40 minutes. I was almost there for an entire hour. And I am like legitimately sore today. So I will have to do some stretches and stuff later. So I did pass all the tests though. So that made me very happy too. So I know that I'm like healthy for the new year. I think that's all my updates guys. That was yesterday that all went down. Oh, no, there's one more update. I was a little bit early when I got to the like drug test place where I did all this stuff and like two doors down from it was a store called Lobster Mobsters. And sounds like you gotta go check it out. And I was like, heck yeah, I will. So I walked in and what this store is, they just like import fresh or frozen seafood. And so I ended up meeting the owner there. I told them about the show because I know, was it Kimmer's or I think White Dove requested that we cook like King Crab or something coming up. So I was talking to the lady about King Crab and she showed me like how much five pounds is and it's $400 for five pounds. But I wouldn't be getting that much. And she's like, well, wait, but if you do the show though, 
And if you take photos and stuff for our website, we can talk about just like giving you guys seafood for free. I was like, what? So yeah, I was like, okay, well, I got to go to work for two weeks up to this camp and my husband's still at work. So we're going to pop by when we're back. Mm. So it was really awesome. I'm happy I went and did that. It was a productive day, we can say yesterday. That is, yeah, a rare occurrence, right? Like seafood is so expensive. So then the other thing that they do there is every Thursday, which yesterday was Thursday, they fly in fresh seafood. And I was there at like 1245 and they were already sold out of mussels for the day. And like the whole time I was in there, it was just a revolving door of people. And like the Atlantic salmon looked phenomenal. So I'm very excited to try this place. Hello, Michael, welcome in. And yeah, that's a win, right, White Dove? So I thought you would be very excited to hear that. I think that's all the updates I got. Samo is killing it up at work. They're chilling. The weather's been like pretty warm. The one day up there, it was only minus five, which is really crazy. It should be like minus 30 every day. Okay, here's the recipes too. These were actually recipes that I went and sifted and found in Discord that I knew I had in there from a while back. So I was like, okay, I wanna use up potatoes. So I just like searched potatoes in Discord and then found the Hasselback potato recipe, which I had all the things for. And then same with everything else. So I found all these recipes being able to clear out my fridge today just using our Discord channel, which was pretty cool. Thanks, White Dove. Okay, so let's get started. We're gonna be using chicken thighs today because chicken thighs are the best chicken, let's be honest. Does anyone have any updates for me? Other than that, I had a really nice visit with my parents. They just came over the one night before they left and we just like had some Popeye's fried chicken and literally talked for four hours straight. It was really good. And that's, that's about it for my Christmas, guys. And then, yeah, I'm going to be gone for New Year's. So New Year's is basically kaput and that's okay with me. You got a new cooking thermometer and it connects to Wi-Fi. Gonna play with it for New Year's. That's so exciting, Mish. Yeah, like what kind of gifts did you guys get this year that you love? Feel free to share if you want. I got some Legos. I got some really beautiful knitted things from my mom and like just cash. Not very exciting, right? But it helps. <laughs> we'll accept it. A ton of books. Nice. I'm actually really proud of myself too. I'm like making a goal to read a lot of books next year either like read or I have an audible subscription I don't know if you guys use that but I just like started my first book already start before the new year and like you're already set up right at first I was kind of weirded out listening to it I was like I don't know if I'm gonna like this because I'm just so used to like being a bookworm right having the pages flip stuff like that but it was really nice to just like put on and then like go do other things at the same time. So just a suggestion for something new in the new year to make your life better. Maybe check out Audible, it's interesting. You got a guide to food in Saskatchewan? Who knew, really? Okay, so first things first, what are we gonna do today? We have a salad, we have chicken, and we have potatoes. And I think the chicken and the potatoes will cook around the same amount of time today. Maybe we'll put the potatoes in a little bit earlier than the chicken. Oh, thank you for also reminding me that. We can say a shout out to Kimmers for sneaking that in after the last stream ended, Mish. So thank you, Kimmers, for donating money to receive a box in the new year. Yeah, <laughs> I seen that. I seen that. So yeah, obviously when I'm back, 
on the 14th, then we will build those boxes and get them sent out within the week. I know, I was so excited, Cookie. I was like, hey, you little sneaker. Although I do love when you guys do that, so thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so easiest thing I think we'll make today is the chicken. And then I've been like trying to decide if we're gonna debone it or not. And I think we're gonna debone the chicken thighs because we're gonna crust it with pumpkin seeds and I think it'll just kind of stick on better and like maybe cook nicer and be easier to eat if we take the bone out of the chicken thigh. But I think I'll just pop those bones into a pot and like make myself a nice little bone broth to drink these next few days before I go. So that way we'll use every part of the chicken still. Hello, Kanav, how are you? And guess what? I already have the pumpkin seed mix in the freezer done up because we've made this on stream before. But I'm just going to write the prep list as we go along here. So for the chicken, I'll say debone and then we can, I would say first season it. You always want to season the chicken like on the meat if you're going to be crusting it just so it doesn't turn out tasting a little bland. And that way you can let the seasoning soak in and it kind of makes the skin moist. And then the crust is going to stick better to it. The other thing I was thinking, and this is like kind of an homage to cornflake chicken, if you guys have ever had that, is you like rub the chicken with a little bit of mayo to get stuff to stick. And it just like cooks up so delicious like that. So I might do the little mayo trick if we're finding that the pumpkin seeds are not sticking to the chicken skin completely. And all the pumpkin seeds are, because obviously you can look at the recipe that we linked here. I'll post it again so that you can look at it as we go over it. But yeah, it's just pumpkin seeds that I put in a food processor with some spices like paprika, cumin, a little bit of coriander. And it's really, really delicious. And then like with the paprika in there, as soon as it like starts cooking in the oil, it turns this nice like orange red color. It's one of my faves. So we'll debone the chicken, we'll season it and then we'll crust it. And then how I like to cook this is usually I will sear it in a pan on both sides first with the crust on and then just finish it in the oven so that we don't burn the pumpkin seeds on the outside without getting it cooked through the middle. So I'll show you guys how to do that later. Or we can just straight bake it as well, kind of like a shake and bake sort of chicken. So maybe we can decide later how we're feeling because you can really choose whatever you want. So I'll just put sear or bake. But obviously we'll have the oven on either way, right? Okay, next up, our salad. I'll do next, because there's quite a few components to it. Um, how was the kale selection in the grocery store where you guys are? Because I didn't have any sort of kale as an option to buy. And like the Tuscan kale was the base of this salad pretty much, just with Brussels sprouts. So I was able to find this mix of kale, chard, and spinach. And it was actually on sale too. That looks pretty good. It's just really baby leaves instead of us like having to cut it up. <laughs> Mish, you never buy kale. I usually only buy, it's called either like dinosaur kale, black kale, or lachinado kale is the three different names you can find it under. But I don't really like the curly kale, so I never buy that one. You didn't see any though, Kimmers. Yeah, I was surprised. Usually it's always around. Like that's such a staple green and it's very easy to grow, but maybe they're having some issues because it's been so dry here. Like the fact that we haven't had any precipitation is really weird. I was just um, watching the one farmer on the island where we used to live we like, she's kind of like a mentor to me as we talk back and forth. And like, she's teaching me about how to start the homestead and stuff. And her ducks are laying eggs now, which they haven't done it like the whole season. And she thinks the ducks 
are like tricked into thinking it's spring already because it's been so warm. She's like, let's hope this is not the case, but that would really mess things up. I was like, whoa, like you don't think about those things, right? And yeah, I got so excited, Cookie. I was like, duck eggs, like that was the best part of being on the island. Flower knows she's there. Okay, our salad. So winter crunch salad. It looks so dang yummy and I had everything in the house to make this. It says, didn't think you could eat Brussels sprouts raw? Well, you can, especially when they're thinly sliced and tossed in a tangy mustardy vinaigrette. Add a mess of kale, salty cheese, sweet tart apple, and crunchy seeds or nuts and you get a borderline addictive salad. It sounds so good. I'm like every now and then I just have this hankering to make a salad. Wait, am I not allowed to actually see this recipe? Can someone else click on this recipe? Because Bon Appetit says I'm not allowed to look at it. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just uh, make my own version of it then. But if you guys can't view it either, I'll just make the best of it. I know that we have to, like I was thinking maybe mandolin the Brussels sprouts. You can look at it, Cookie. Do you pay, do you pay their paywall? Or you still just have a couple free recipes left. So shave the Brussels. You see it too. What the heck? This is what it says. You've read your last free recipe. Subscribe during the holiday sale for unlimited recipe access and beyond for just $2 a month. Just incognito mode. <laughs> yeah, exactly, Suzanne. Well, I need to know these tricks. I don't know any of these sneaky little tricks. But all I could uh, read was the description and then I can read the reviews and that's it. But when, okay, let's see these reviews. Everyone's like loving it. There's 87 reviews on this recipe. OMG, I love this salad. I added more cheese, more apple, and I put pecans with the sunflower seeds. It was amazing and will be in my rotation from now on. This is a real winner. I've made it twice in a week and I can't get enough. Didn't have sunflower seeds, so I used pistachios and it was great. That's like today I don't have sunflower seeds, so we're gonna use walnuts that I knew would be good with the apples and everything else. They said, okay, this is interesting. I used the measurements in the recipe almost exactly, just a little bit more garlic and shallot in the dressing, nice. And I had two large salads over a couple days. I could have easily stretched it further, but it was too tasty to save. So I only want like food for the next like two to three days. because so I don't wanna be throwing anything out on Monday morning before I leave for two weeks, cause no one, no one's going to be home probably before I get back or if Sam doesn't say extra, he will be home four days before I get home. So we'll see. Okay, shave the Brussels. We already dealt with the kale, so we kind of have an easier version of this salad today. We will do our apples, our cheese. We got to toast the walnuts always and then I think it's just the dressing does that sound right guys if you're looking at it Brussels sprout apple cheese and then obviously mix the kale at the end walnut dressing cheese Okay, what's this one, Mish? Do not sleep on this salad. Literally, don't sleep on it. It'll be soggy. It's so delicious, and even those who don't like salad will love it. I dress the greens about an hour before eating to let them soak into the kale to soften them a bit. Of course I won't sleep on this salad, Karen. <laughs> I'm glad you thought of that, too. Don't sleep on it, chat. But yeah, if you had, like, actual um full grown kale that we were supposed to get but couldn't find you would dress the greens a little bit before and like massage the dressing into the kale to soften them and make it nicer to eat but we have baby greens today and those are delicate 
So we don't want to dress those any earlier than right before we plan to eat them so they don't go soggy. Okay, lastly, our Hasselbacks, our potatoes. We are going to slice the potatoes. I'll show you how we slice them later. I do have some uh, skewers around, so that should help us. I'll show you how we like use those to slice the potatoes. And then what does this recipe say that I can actually look at? And I laughed that this was a Betty Crocker recipe for the potatoes. I was like, are you serious? Wait, why does it say four food trends to look for? Hello? Where'd the recipe go? Guys, what is happening with the internet today? <laughs> I'm laughing so hard right now. Today's meal is just a salad. No, this is the whole menu for the day. <laughs> Hello, um, internet, let me just fix this for a sec. How does the link say potatoes on it, but then it actually links to something else? Okay. Fixing real quick. And I just clicked on the stream elements online and it says the recipes in the command are those from um, the last stream now. I am so confused about what's going on. <laughs> Chat, I'm scared. I need help. I'm blinking all of the times. And this is weird. That's straight up. That doesn't even make sense. Oh, and I have an update for you on the the upstairs neighbor situation. I talked to the the property manager guys and she is going to take care of it she said just send her a message every week and she'll just keep sending a letter and there's just like a maximum amount of times that she can send a letter before like she has to escalate it she's like i guess we also had issues with the tenant that was there before you guys so now i understand why that person left okay let's see if this works It worked. I fixed it, everyone. Don't worry. It's totally going to be fine today. Don't worry. But I was woke woken up this morning between 3 and 6 a.m. They were like literally just stomping the whole time. And so finally I got like so sick of it, of being woken up. That I just like went to the the parents room because I don't have a roommate right now right so I can go into his room and I just like pounded on the ceiling until they woke up to tell their kids to be quiet like it's quiet time until 6 a.m people 7 a.m even in some places shady yuppie okay so I have some roasted garlic for these potatoes that we did the other week and I was like oh that'll be perfect to use the garlic up and then we'll also use like all the yummy garlic oil, pour that over the potato. So I'll just leave that out so it'll warm up and kind of soften. And then yeah, fresh rosemary, a little bit of butter on there, some cheese and just salt and pepper. And we just roast those in the oven. It's so, so good. So when we are doing the cheese for the salad, we have to do extra. So I'll just write extra on the list up there. My, okay, so when my parents came over, right, I was like, okay, my parents are going to come over. Like, I really hope that, like, the kids are not going to do that the whole time. Literally, almost the whole four hours. My dad was so mad. He almost went upstairs 
like pounded on the door, but he's like, if they don't answer the door for you, like what is Megan doing that gonna do? Literally nothing. It was so nuts though. <laughs> They're like, this is what you deal with. I was like, yeah. <laughs> I guess I've been really patient because to see like how other people think of it, they're like freaking out and I was just laughing. How long do these potatoes take? I just want to get like a timing in my head. So 375 Fahrenheit to bake the potatoes. It says they bake for one hour without the cheese on them and then we put the cheese on at the end and bake for like another 15 minutes well the other thing is the insulation in this apartment like just the way it's built is very cheap let's be honest and so yeah the noise barrier doesn't exist i'm gonna say it just doesn't exist But yes, we, we can go with the point of like, every person needs to be disciplined at some point in their life. And it's unfortunate that some people need it more than others, but the time is now. And I've been very patient about that part of it is like, yes, I understand they are going to have to discipline the kids now. And so I, I will listen to the temper tantrums because I know things are starting to change, right? Like, I'm not going to pound on the ceiling if I hear them, like, trying to make the kids behave. That's just, like, super rude. Okay, I think we're going to start with the potatoes and then go from there, guys. Because they seriously take an hour to bake first. I wasn't expecting that. Okay, I'm gonna put my list up here because there's like quite a few things we're doing today. And maybe I'll take the chicken out in a little bit so it can start to temp up. And I don't know about you guys, but I've been like super thirsty lately. It's a little bit out of control. Let's see how these potatoes are doing because last time we looked at them, they were coming back alive. Like when I picked up the bag just now, there was definitely like a softened one. I don't know why they're really like sprouting so much, but I was like, I need to use these up before I go. So I'm gonna pick the ones that feel like the firmest. And then that'll probably be it. Annie! Oh my gosh, that sounds good. You know, I did see they had some really beautiful oxtail pieces at the business Costco. Oh, that's not the shape of one I wanted. And they weren't super expensive either. It was like 20, 20 bucks or something. That sounds so delicious though. So that should be good enough. Obviously we'll clean those up. I'm just doing one small roasting pan of these. I think like as we cut them, we will get them nestled into the pan so they all stay together. That one was a bit pricey, $11 a pound, but worth it. Oh, quiet cookie. They literally are ready to be planted and I don't know why this is happening. They were fine, fine, fine. And then all of a sudden, they just started like growing one day. Well, you know what I was just thinking of actually? This could be from the onions. Cause we didn't always have like onions stored in the room. And Sam bought those onions a bit back. And I know that like when you store onions and potatoes, you can't store them next to each other. So I don't know if that's the reason. But like they weren't even next to each other. I'm just gonna get my peeler. Oh, and the skewers while I'm over here. Who that? Who this? Yep. 
Yeet! Hi, Weasel. Thank you for this 17 month in a row resub. Happy Friday. How are you? They are fantastic. Okay, there's our skewers. We'll need those for slicing the potatoes later, but let's get these cleaned up first. You know what I'm kind of excited for chat going going back to work for a bit is like not having to cook for myself. That's like honestly the best part about going up to camp. Obviously, unless you're the chef, but like you made that choice on your own, right? And like a free grocery store. I was like, Sam, I can eat snacks the whole week and I don't have to feel sad about paying $50 for one bag of groceries. Good, just finished some lunch. What was for lunchy? We're just starting making some lunch. I'm doing good, man. I'm feeling A-OK. -okay. Oh, and the other cool thing that I got today. So like my recruiter asked me if I had a valid or updated food safe certificate before I go up to the camp. And I was like, I have one, but it's probably not valid anymore because it was like from culinary school, right? And so I get to do a new food safe course for free. And so that's what I get to do later after stream today. Kate has some homework, but it should be really easy. But Sam's like, I'm pretty sure that's like a hundred dollar course to take. So that's pretty sweet that the company pays for it. Yeah, back to school. Hey, I love learning. You guys know that. You made... Oh, you made some baked potatoes and you had half a sub. Yum. Why didn't they ask for it when you worked up north? So like every site is ran differently, Mish. And like, can you totally not tell? It's so different. So like the camp that we worked at, where Sam is now, like there is no drug and alcohol test before you go up. And like, that is so troublesome to me. Yes, it is a dry camp. So like you're not allowed to indulge in those things when you're up there, nor are you allowed to bring them up. But they don't test before you go up and they don't even do a fitness test, which I did yesterday. And in my head as I was doing this, and I even like told the person that was testing me, cause she was like pretty cool. She was probably my age. I was like, for real, like the camp that I just came from, not even half the people would be passing this test today. Like I'm not even making this up guys. So I'm very interested to see like what the staff is gonna be like where I'm going to. Okay, so this is what we're gonna do. This helps a little bit, but it doesn't always help. Just kind of watch where your knife is. Is they say to set up skewers like this so you can kind of like pop them under the sides of the potato so that when you put your knife down, it just hits the skewer instead of going completely through. But obviously potatoes are round and tapered and when you get towards the edges, they go up on the bottom part. So just watch that your knife doesn't go completely through. But if it does, it's okay. Just kind of, we're gonna pack them all into this little pan together anyway. So just lift it up carefully, pack it in there. It's fine. It's all going to the same place. Doesn't Canada have health and safety regulations on that? Yes, but it also differs from your provinces and territories, um, the company that owns the mine, the contractors that are contracted through the mine. Like there is so much background work to how those places operate and it is very interesting to learn about it and like that's also part of it for me is like going to see a different site outside of Nunavut because it is ran like so lax in my opinion to see how another site is run. Okay so I'm just going to be careful on this end and then how we're going to cut these is like quarter inch thick See, I almost went too far and that one like split open already. But like I said, it's okay. Ah, I really did go through. It's okay, chat. 
<laughs> Have you ever been to some of it? No, I've only ever been to none of it. That's like such a running joke up there too. But yeah, the hassle back, so all we do is we don't want to cut all the way through the bottom of the potato. So it kind of looks like an accordion. And then it looks really beautiful and you get like all these yummy crispy edges on the top when it starts to roast. Hi, Mickey. I'm good. How are you doing? Okay, so pick that one up. In. Next. And like, obviously, I'm trying to put the flattest part down to the cutting board, but like that potato is not flat at all. These skewers don't help. But I just wanted to show you guys, I guess, if you can find flat potatoes on one side. <laughs> but that's the little trick that I, once upon a time, was taught. But I'll just usually slice until I can feel it, like, starting to taper down. And then just stop and do another one. Oh, really, Annie? Some of your oxtails frozen and some is thawed. How did you thaw it? Or was it all just kind of packed together weird in a bag? Because sometimes that can happen. Oh no. Are you souping? <laughs> that was the greatest question ever. Oh, you ran it under cold water. You're doing the little, the, the rush method. Somebody forgot to take out his meat earlier enough or early enough. <laughs> it is what it is. Trust me, I almost forgot to take out the chicken for today's stream. I like kept thinking about it during the day as I was out and about doing things. I was like, I really need to take out that chicken for the stream. Just kept forgetting about it until it was like nighttime already. So don't worry, Annie, you're not alone in this endeavor. But I will tell you that all of my chicken pieces are thawed. <laughs> Just got back from the store, so there's no time for that. Hey, Mr. Redbeard, you, f you hit 50k? Wait, so does that mean you gotta come over for a meal? We got to plan it for when I'm back. Okay, so I just like split that potato so it would fit properly. And then let's say everything goes well with these next two. This one will probably just fit right in here. Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Don't worry. It's only two weeks. It's not going to, it's not like it's going to be like almost an eight week stint again. I just got rid of those because it looked weird. It's only two weeks. Your birthday's in two weeks? Oh, this might be a thing then. Shutterbug, how's it going? Ah, I cut it all the way through. I'm scared. On the ninth? Yeah, two weeks, sorta. Hey, we can make it work. Gotta like pack it in there. Okay, and then this one should be like perfect there. You're 25 again? Crazy how that keeps happening. <laughs> It's going good, Shatterbug. Time is flying by. Wait, you had no Wi-Fi for a couple weeks? That's why you missed the cooking. Well, welcome back. Yeah, what even is Titan's tally? Is he saving up for the, like, one million? 
Yeah, I guess happy early birthday since I won't see you. Ah, I cut through it. Perfection is hard to achieve, okay? But we can always strive for it. Oh, this is, <laughs> this is what the lodge manager asked me yesterday when she was like seeing what I wanted to do at camp. She's like, how good at like making sandwiches are you? I was like, I'm like pretty good at it. I, like made them for up to 200 people before by myself, no problem. She's like, how do you feel? Do you, would you be able to make sandwiches for 400 people by yourself? And it's two and a half sandwiches per person. I was like, no. <laughs> that is so many sandwiches to make for one human. I was like, maybe not the first week, maybe the second week. Are you insane? I'm not a robot. Exactly, right? Like maybe, okay, maybe if there's like three varieties of sandwiches, but like from what I'm used to, I have to make like 10 different sandwiches. That's nuts though. So I'm gonna go see what happens. I love to just like, I love to just like hang back and observe. <laughs> it's gonna be such a different experience. I don't know anyone. There's no expectations. Yeah, butter and lettuce. Uh, here's your cheese and cucumber sandwiches. Okay, let's pour some seasoning onto here. And some oil, let's see what else this says. Okay, butter, oil. We gotta chop some rosemary. We got our garlic behind us. And that just roasts all together first and then we put the cheese on after an hour. No, yeah. They would not be happy having to wait for their lunch. But like I said, I don't know how many sandwiches they make there, what varieties they do. We'll see how it goes though. I want to look up what they, the lodge was called again so that you guys can Google it if you want. Just to like see where it is. One sec. Okay, it's called Poplar Ridge Lodge. Poplar Ridge Lodge. I'll write it in chat. Titan, were your ears ringing? We were just talking about you. We are saying no one has as many pots and pans points as you. Oh, they're always, they're always thinking of how you can hire one less person. Believe me, I know this, Lily. I know this. The audacity for someone to ask that. The fact that there's a human out there that is capable of it is blows my mind. Okay, I'm getting the oven on because we're almost ready for this and then we can get them in. It's going to take a little bit. 375. I'm going to go up to 390 because my oven bakes really cold, let's say. Okay, I'm going to get garlicky for a little bit here. Maybe first, should I work on just taking the garlic cloves out of this? Kind of popping them in with the potatoes because it's going to be so delicious. Chat, Samuel gets fish and chippies for lunch today. I was like, I'd eat that. That sounds so yummy. He's tending a brisketti. Only the best of things to tend to. The tastiest.
one sandwich every five seconds. That's how what it would have to be. That's impossible. That's humanly impossible. <laughs> That's what I said, Titan. I was like, I want that for lunch. You're practicing for competitions next year, dude. Do you already like have some in mind that you're going to go to? Okay, well, you have 12 hours though. Like it's a 12 hour shift to make that much stuff. But still, no human should have to work like that. And like, that's one thing I've always kind of felt when this company has like gone through some changes recently is like, you kind of just become a number. I'm gonna save some of this oil for the salad dressing. So let's not use all of it. And then the rest I'll just top up with some butter. Ice and embers, Kansas City sanctioned in May. Then another in July near Red Deer. Sick. Dude, I hope I'm home for the one in the summer. I'm, I'm totally coming down. If that's possible. I need to go eat barbecue. Oh, and Chad, I applied for 10, 11 jobs earlier this week but i will say the job search here where we live is quite non-existent i was very surprised and like shocked almost 11 but yeah like i was searching for like grocery stores and stuff that interests me right i'm like pretty open to a lot of things but i would love to just go work in a grocery store it's easy when I search grocery store though, 22 jobs, that's it. It used to be so good, dude. <laughs> it was like 22, that's it. There's so many grocery stores in the city. So let's see if I hear back. We shall see. Oh, that is the one that I forgot to actually go to the Costco site and apply. But I'm like looking for a part-time job. So I don't know if Costco hires part-time, that's all. Just gonna make some little butter nubbins from this chat to put over the potatoes. Whenever you're roasting stuff, especially like root vegetables, I find you always need like a good amount of fat so it doesn't dry out. Sister's girlfriend works in a grocery store and she gets 30% on all things. Yeah, that's like the whole point of it is like work somewhere where there's food around. Usually you get a discount on it. Right? Like it seems like every place you go to there, they need extra staff. But then when you go to actually look for these jobs, it doesn't exist anymore. It is very odd as someone who's like looking for a job. Because <laughs> yeah, like I grew up here, right? For 23 years and like Redbeard was saying, like it used to be, you could get a job within like a day. You could walk in somewhere and be hired and be going to work the next day. No, no, it's not the same no mo. Okay, that's a good amount of butter, isn't it chat? I felt good about it. It is kind of sad, right? And then like you wonder why so many people struggle. If it's just that hard to get a job for like an actual productive like human being in society that doesn't like super suffer from any illnesses. Imagine how hard it is for other people to actually get a job. I think about those people. It's like, damn, if this is hard for me, like what is going on? Like I've done a lot of different jobs. So like my resume is pretty good, especially like when I'm applying for labor jobs, like usually they hire really quick.
And yeah, thanks for also pointing that out, right? Like a lot of places are trying to like diversify their company culture. So like they want to hire more female workers, right? Not the case. I love to think about these things, like, especially with people around the world. Like I was talking with my farm mentor, Amber, and like, I was like, this is a pretty far reaching question, but like, do you know if things are as bad for like the farmers in Europe? And like, apparently it is. Cause I guess once Brexit like split and left, they started allowing more imports of like cheap foreign goods into Europe. And now all the local farmers are struggling because no one wants to pay the prices anymore. I think that's good for rosemary. I don't like to overload it too much with rosemary flavor. I always find a little goes a long way. So other than that, I think we just need a little bit of salt and pepper. That looks so good, right? <laughs> Yum. Oh yeah, that was the one thing I noticed. Okay, so when I searched for like grocery store jobs, most of the jobs available at grocery stores were for pharmacists. Like they're looking for like three pharmacists at every store. Whoa. So you're saying I just need to keep doing my thing then. Got it. You got it. The weather has also worsened. Yeah, just like here. Good amount of salt and pepper on these babies. If we need to, we can like re-moisten the potatoes with the like butter once it's melted. If it looks a little bit dry as it's baking, we can just like scoop it and ladle it back over it, but we'll see how it goes. I've just been like craving a lot of like baked cheesy things lately. <laughs> I don't know why. So this is what we get. Okay, and then next, let's get our walnuts for the salad to toast. So that those can go in the oven too. And clear some of this stuff out. We can just put them in the same style of little baking pan. I usually just put one layer. shoulders are so sore. <laughs> it's like making me laugh. I haven't been sore like this in like so many years. Like they had me like doing stuff with like 25 and 35 pound weights. You had to like do this whole little like routine. I felt like I was at a personal training session. And like if you didn't pass 85 or higher, you're, you're not allowed to go to the job. Yeah, so it says that we should bake it for an hour without the cheese lily, just so it doesn't burn because it's um, it's an aged cheese, so it doesn't melt like how a mozzarella would. It more just kind of like gets crispy. So yeah, we'll put the cheese on after an hour and then just finish it off for like 10 or so minutes, which yeah, that really makes sense because sometimes we make the mistake of being like, yeah, let's just put everything together, right? Make it easy. I would have made that mistake. Okay, so both of these can go in the oven. I will set a timer for the walnuts first. They will probably take, I'm gonna say 10 minute timer and then we'll check them. 
And then this, I don't believe we cover the potatoes, but let's check. No, it just says bake for one hour. Easy. Timer. 10 minutes. For the nuts, we're good. Okay, our list. I think we'll do the chicken next, just so it's ready to go. So potato slice, rosemary, and bake. And then we got our toast walnut going for the salad. Is the garlic gonna burn since it's already well roasted? It might. I wasn't really planning on like eating it with it. It might get a little dark, we'll see. I was like intrigued. Or I was thinking like with all of the butter in there, it might just like get softer. Cause we're not going above 400 Fahrenheit. So it's not a super, super high heat. But yeah, this is our chicken thigh. Remember when we packed them up on stream? December 15th, I'm just gonna get a cutting board. And then my boning knife. I'll just cut the bones out, so maybe I'll get a little pot. So that we can make a broth. A yummy bone broth. I'm boning it, Mish. Gotta open this up. I am like hungry today. I guess a personal training session will do that, right? My metabolism is just going now. Get the knife. What's everyone else getting up to today? Like I said, after stream, I have to do my food safe course. And then I still didn't go for a walk yet, so I think I'll go for a walk. I might not though, because I am still sore, so I might just do something else for exercise. You're just browning meat, Annie. <laughs> nice. And then, okay, one more thing on the chicken. I wasn't sure if I'd have enough pumpkin seed mix to cover all of them, but if there's not enough, I was gonna coat one or two with Rice Krispies. Is that insane? Tell me right now. But we've all had cornflake chicken, which I love so much. So I was thinking like Rice Krispie chicken would not be bad. We'll see. Gotta chop some onions next. That's tomorrow's stream for me. We're like making a big sofrito to put in the freezer because I have so much mirepoix in the fridge. And like, I wasn't planning on leaving, right? So it's like, oh gosh, the mass exodus. So just cut alongside the chicken bone. I kind of do it like two different ways. Just find it's easier like that. It's like I'll cut it this way and then I'll turn it and then cut it back across the other way. And I just don't want to get any of the cartilage into the meat. And then we get that, which is going to be so delicious. So all of that skin's going to like crisp up. I think we'll just like stack them up here together. And then it can go onto a sheet pan after. I actually prepare my mirepoix in advance. Yeah, we're gonna make a massive batch of Spanish sofrito, which is something I was taught at the last like high-end restaurant I worked at. I would always make it for like the bases of my dishes, like risotto and stuff. Mm, scoop of that. Oh, steaming mussels, scoop of sofrito. Like you can put it in so many things, pastas, anything like that. And I was like, hey, how am I gonna like 
make all this stuff not go bad. So that's what it's gonna be. And like it just cooks for hours. Does Canada have the 12 grapes New Year's tradition? Tradition. Wow, I could not talk there for a sec. I don't think so. I've never heard of it, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. This one is like a little bit bloody. I'm just gonna cut that out because it looks weird. Not in my chicken, but it can go in the broth pot. That's allowed. Oop. Okay, we got the cartilage there. See how sometimes it just like sneaks in. I hate that little end piece. Okay. <clears throat> I got a little frogger. Oh, the other thing that I've been doing this week is trying not to drink coffee. I don't know why, but every now and then I just like go through this time in my life where I stop drinking coffee for a bit and like I feel so good. But like my coffee tolerance is really low and I find if I drink it too consistently, that my body like doesn't actually get rid of all the caffeine and then it just like makes my anxiety really bad. <laughs> it's just a Spain thing. You eat 12 grapes during the new year countdown for good luck. Really? I have never heard of that. I love those little kinds of traditions. People here, I don't know. What do people do for New Year's? I haven't been to a New Year's party in a while. It's either like you have like the countdown on TV that people like love to watch. I don't know why people are so obsessed with like watching people just count down numbers. Or you like have an actual party where like you're not really paying attention to that and there's just one person that like says the countdown. Those are always more fun I find. Like sometimes the New Year's parties are like a masquerade where everyone has to wear a mask. That can be fun. It's a little awkward, Lily. <laughs> Thank you for your honesty about this. It's adorable. Yeah, you end up literally looking like a chipmunk if you don't chew it fast enough. Especially if the grapes are like huge. Cookie, caviar, and champagne and just chill. I love that. I like that version. Okay, got all the cartilage. Only two left. Yeah, right? Like, I am not a partier at all either. Like, the lady yesterday, when I didn't, like, answer on the sheet for the drug test, where it asked, like, if you smoke or drink. Like, I just left it blank, because I don't. She's like, you don't, like, smoke or drink? I was like, no. She's just like surprised, right? Because everyone mostly does, or you like assume that. Ooh, there's this little piece of bone got like split. Just be careful. There's no little bone fragments on the meat. That's always really painful if you bite down on that. It's usually white grapes, Lily. That sounds fancy. Okay, tuck this all in. Some of these skin pieces are like weird. I'm just gonna trim it. Are 
Are you sure it's chicken, Kate? You honestly never know here, because, like, sometimes it could end up being rabbit. <laughs> the joke still... still stands. And thank you for that. They even sell the 12 grapes pre-packaged in the supermarkets. Man, the Spanish markets were like some of the most beautiful I've ever been to in my life. Okay, my timer is going off for the walnuts. This is why I always keep like the hand that you hold your knife with should always be clean. Just so you can go and like check on something. Potatoes smell really good. And the walnuts are done. They're just like kind of sizzling. You can hear it. And they're just slightly golden brown. Around the edges, they're a little darker. So I'll just like give them a little shake as they cool. And then we'll chop those up for the salad later. So just leave those on the side. And then let's reset our timer for the potatoes. So they say an hour. That was already 10 minutes. So I'm just going to go, I think, like 45 more minutes. And then we can check them at that point. Okay, let's finish up this last piece of chicken. And then we'll get it seasoned and crusted. And then we really just have our salad left. Oh, and I have to, after this, I think I'm going to go check to see if there's a delivery at the door. I had to get different work pants because I guess like you're only allowed to wear like scrub style pants at this camp if you work in the kitchen. So I got Samo to order me some quick quick off of Amazon. Because like all of the stuff in the stores here, because it was on sale for Boxing Day, everything is out of stock now. How many people? She said 400. So literally like double where I just was, Mish. Okay, first I'm gonna rinse the knife and wash my hands. Definitely spray the knife with some disinfectant. And then I'll switch to cold water and fill the broth pot up. Hi, Dusty. Everything's done that can be done. Good job, Annie. Recipe calls for a pinch of red pepper flakes. You put in six dried red chilies. That's a little bit more than they called for, I would say. He's spicing up his life, if you will. Okay. Fill in this with cold water. Hi, Palooza as well. You're gonna need a Roto-Rooter. <laughs> he will, or he will literally be the Roto-Rooter. I don't think Annie will have any issues with the Roto-Rooter. <laughs> Trust, I will. Oh my gosh. There it is. A simmering of the broth will happen today. I'll just cook that down and then probably refill the liquid again and then just cook it down one more time and then strain it from there. Okay, let us, maybe I will season all the chicken on this board first, just with salt and pepper. And then like I said, we can transfer it to the baking tray. Oh, I can't even squat today, chat, without like making old lady grumbling noises. <laughs> Kate died. You're gonna go brown the big frozen pieces for a bit longer? Do it up. I'm just going to foil and parchment line this baking pan really quick. 
Do I have any stainless steel baking trays? I don't think so. I only have aluminum too. Right? Like that's aluminum. That's not stainless steel. I've never used a stainless steel baking tray. Wait. Yes, I have a homemade one. My dad made my mom a stainless steel baking tray once upon a time. That was the size of the whole oven. It's like the most legitimate cookie pan you'll ever use. But I don't know if she still has it. It was huge. That's all I remember. It was just this flat sheet of stainless steel and then just like one side had this little lip so you could like easily take it out of the oven. Most amount of cookies ever baked on there. Yeah, this salad, Dusty, like, read the reviews. People are going nuts for this salad. Because I know there's a brand called Baking Steel. If you've never heard of it, Annie. And that's what they make. Is like for pizzas and stuff like that in the oven, but it's called baking steel. And it's just this really big sheet of stainless, I believe. Okay. Get this ready. I'm gonna get some tongs so I don't have to wash my hands again. It's starting to smell like garlicky potatoes and it smells really good. Okay, so we're gonna season the underneath as well, I think. Not just on the skin. So open it all up like that. Wow, look how small that little chicken thigh was the first one we did. The stock needs to simmer for 24 hours. Did you not read any of the recipe before you started? <laughs> and yeah, Dust, you've never had raw Brussels sprouts? So I saw this bag at Costco and they're like really small Brussels sprouts. And I think they're gonna turn out so good. Yeah, guilty. <laughs> Teachers, I tell ya. <laughs> But he did read the baking temp, just not the time. Shoot. Okay, flip this over. <laughs> Mish. Wow, good job. <laughs> I love how evil we are to each other. That's like part of being an adult though, right? If you can't bug your friends, then who can you really bug? And like they're online friends, so like you know nothing's even gonna happen. You can bug them forever. <laughs> oh no, here we go. <laughs> Take out for dinner. <laughs> you guys. Okay. I'm just going to switch these to here now so I can see where they're going to lay. Those like really spread out now that we took the bone out. Holy. I'm trying to put the really big pieces like on the outside of the pan. Okay. And so I'll pepper those. I think I'm done with the tongs as well now. So 
Camo gets like such a good m meals today. He gets fish and chips for lunch. And then he gets steak and shrimp tonight. So it's Friday. Okay. Those are looking yummy. So now we have our spiced pumpkin seed mixture. Look at this is when we made this June 23rd. This is why I love like putting dates on these things. So we just kept it in the freezer. And then it's also really important. Like I know all the time I say toast your nuts and seeds before you use them. But for this process, we don't want to because they would get too dark if we toasted them first. So it was raw pumpkin seeds. And then I think we did paprika and cumin and like garlic and oregano from what I can remember. And so you can like try to pat on the pumpkin seed and the mixture just right on the chicken skin if you want. But I think I'm gonna adhere it with a little bit of mayonnaise today and then just bake it because we took the bone out. So these are gonna bake in around like 20 minutes, I'm gonna say, which is not long at all. Thank you, Annie. Did you even it up? He did. 50, or sorry, 500, no, 56,000 out of the 100. Thank you very much for that. So has anyone like done this method of putting mayo onto chicken? Like I was saying earlier, um, I would have like cornflake chicken sometimes. My mom would make it and then I would see her. So you put the mayo on the chicken and then you just like dredge it with the spiced cornflakes. And the way that it bakes, so think of like how we switch out sometimes butter or margarine on a grilled cheese with mayo for the outer layer. Same, same. Just grabbing a little spoon and then a spreader. If I still have it, I might have put it in my work bag, the sandwich spreader. Nope, it's still here. Sweet! Cornflake chicken is so good. Use mayo sometimes on chicken and even fish. Yes, fish. Don't sleep on the mayo on the fish. Nice, sesame coated. So just like do a little dollop on each one and we'll spread it out. So we don't want to contaminate the mayo. And like you'd think that putting something wet like this is going to make it soggy. But it really helps it crisp up so nice. How do I say this? Juleb? Thank you for the follow. Let's see what's going to work better. I don't know if this will or just the spoon. Probably just the spoon, honestly, because you can get in the nooks and crannies. A little extra on this one because it's quite large. So we'll just transfer it. What kind of Christmas movies did you guys watch over the time off? The last one that I was watching last night with Sam was Home Alone. Because that's like just such a classic. But I didn't watch that many other Christmas movies. You watched Maestro? Is that on a streaming service that I can watch it on oh i'd probably need to like put a vpn on it or something because it's american it's a documentary on netflix yeah dusty the only one that you watched was home alone it's just such a classic like even after all these years of watching it every single year i still like laugh and love it <laughs> Thank you. 
You watched Barbie with your parents? What did you think of it? I watched it not long ago. And like, I felt like it wasn't really up to the hype. But maybe they hyped it up too much. It was still a good movie, just not what I was expecting, let's say. Okay, we have prepared. Whoa. Hello? We have prepared to put the crust on the chicken. We still have 30 minutes on the potatoes, so that's awesome. You're going to go see Wonka tomorrow? Sweet. You thought it was cute. Yeah, that's kind of how I feel too. I was like, this was cute. But like totally not what I was expecting. Trying to get an even mix of like the spices and the pumpkin seeds. I watched Polar Express, Close. Home Alone. I watched like half of The Holiday. Which is like a rom-com that I remember watching when I was younger. It was okay, I didn't make it all the way through it. I like that Jack Black's in it though. And like Jude Law and stuff, it has a pretty good cast. I think I've just seen it too many times that I got tired. I was glued to the oxygen channel. You, Gen X, I love how you <laughs> specify that. Watched Rudolph with a friend, a young millennial. He was horrified by the violence. Oh my gosh. I love how you do have to specify like a young millennial and an old one. Times have changed. Oh, have they ever. I haven't watched Rudolph. Oh, sorry, and I watched The Grinch. I just love The Grinch. But yeah, if you guys have never watched Klaus, it's also on Netflix. It is so, so good. I'm like obsessed with it. I'm putting a really good coating of this on there because I think it's totally going to stick nice with the mayo. I really hope it gets nice and crisped up. I didn't think we'd have enough of the crust, but we actually have extra still to put back into the freezer again. I guess if I was cooking for more people, I'd probably been using this up. But nobody's home still. I'm all alone. So yeah, like I said, once the paprika starts to get moistened on the crust, it turns this really nice like orange red color on the chicken. You'll see, it's pretty magical. So that's another thing done. We are cruising right along. Let's look at our list and see what we gotta do for the salad. So chicken debone, we seasoned it and we crusted it and then we're just gonna bake it instead of searing it. Yes, yeah dust. That is usually like if Sam and I are together, we'll always watch Harry Potter over Christmas from start to finish the movies. But we'll probably do that when he comes home. I guess we'll see. Okay, so we gotta shave Brussels sprouts, chop some apples. We gotta make a dressing still. We watch all of them. It takes a while. Look at how cute these are. Shout out to BC. It's fresh. It's the chef's reserve. Brussels sprouts. Yeah, these were from Costco and I bought these like not planning to use them on stream. This whole bag of Brussels sprouts. So how much is in here? Two pounds was only five, six or sorry, four sixty nine under five dollars for all this. 
I was like, and that is going in the cart. Yeah, right? I miss it. I miss it, Shutterbug. <laughs> and that's how you put Brussels sprouts everywhere. Who builds a bag like that? We lost two in the sink. This is what happens when you do fitness tests, Annie. <laughs> I don't even know my own strength anymore. Okay, they're really small though. So I'm like worried about being able to mandolin them and like hold on to it. We might use the food processor. They're starting to go bad though in this bag, I will say. A little bit farty essence. What was the fitness test for? It took 40 minutes dust. And yeah, there's like a couple soggy ones in here, but that's what happens when they're smaller, I think. I do have one of the slicer attachments, I think. Or do we just have a shredder? I don't know, I need to look. But I need to also make sure that it's like a thin enough attachment. Cause sometimes it's a bit too thick. Hi Torino. Yeah, baby cabbages, exactly. But we do have to clean up a couple of them. Okay, so this is the fitness test that I did yesterday. What did we start with? So we first did like just some like little warm up exercises. Annie. <laughs> Annie. Now I gotta wait to tell this story chat because it'll just interrupt it the whole time. But we will welcome in these five people coming up. I'm just gonna clean this while I wait. Gers, you're in here? That's perfect. I love when that happens. They were live in chat. And Norges, I know I did see that. I'm gonna miss that song for two weeks. Okay, we got everyone. We know four out of the five, maybe I know the other one. I know all of them. Okay, welcome to the kitchen crew and thank you once again, Annie. Gifting some subbies. We got Josie, Beachy Peasy Sandy, Mama Reagan. My stock's about to go over. This is why I've Listening in a kitchen is always good. Okay, Mama Regan, who we haven't seen in forever, honestly. Gers, as well as Norge's store. You don't know Beachy? They were in a lot in the summer. I think. I don't know, they've been around though. Okay, so I'm just cutting off all the bottoms of these first. And like, honestly, they look almost so nice that we don't have to but i like to do this because some of the not so nice outer leaves usually fall off and are easier to take off so anything that's like browned or just discolored doesn't look that good pick it off now okay so back to the fitness test so we started with like a little quick warm-up and then what did I do? I first had to do like the military style where you have like two five pound weights and you hold out your arms. I think I'd had to do it for like 30 seconds. And then from there, I think you go to like a shoulder press and like you just hold the weights like above your head for like a certain amount of time. And then what else? Okay, then we like loaded up this little like box. Oh no, sorry. We like had the, a 10 pound weight, I think, or like 25 pound. And you just like bend over 90 degrees and hold it there for some time. And like all of these movements are like seeing if you have an injury that you're lying about. Cause like if you do those movements, she said, like if you had a hurt back and were lying, well, you wouldn't be able to do the movement properly, right? So they're trying to like weed that out. 
And then, yeah, we like loaded up this little wooden box thing with all these weird handles around it with some weights. And like I had to pick it up off of the, they had a doctor's like seated table in there. So I pick it up like this, or sorry, on the sides, turn around, like walk a distance, go down on the ground with it, like with proper formation, back up. You do that three times with 25 pounds. And then at the end, you stop, you put the box down and like you lift it up three times like a toolbox up and down on each side of your uh, body. And then after that, you go to a 35 pound one and then you do that whole thing again. And like I was breathing so hard after this and like that's the point of it is to like be almost dying. <laughs> And so they, they listen to your heart rate then when they get it elevated and then they give you a minute to rest and they listen to it again. And yeah, I had to do like different squats. There's just so many things. And like you even had to do one where you like pick up a thing like this with your hands together and like go up with your shoulders. I'm brave. Well, I didn't have a choice. If I wanted to go up to this job, I had to pass this test. And like, yeah, she was saying like yesterday she had some people that couldn't pass it. And so they couldn't go up to this site. I was like, I don't know if you should tell me that, but that is interesting. Cause like you always wonder like, can everyone pass this? This is so hard. And like at the end, instead of it being like a urine drug test, they actually test for your glucose in your urine as well as your liver levels and stuff like that. So like same thing, if you like say you don't drink, but then your liver levels say otherwise, well then they're gonna tell the employer, right? But that was the most insane thing I've ever done to just try to get up to a job. The coolest part of it though, which I really liked was they told you if you passed everything before you left the same day, it's not like you leave there and you're just like, oh my gosh, like I wonder if I did okay. No, I knew like as I was walking out the door that I passed and like everything was good. Very powerful nerd, hello. Okay, so we gotta get these shredded up. We're almost done cleaning them. How long on the taters? 18 minutes on the taters, and then they said usually like 15 more after that. I'd like to put the chicken in in a little bit, I think. Tending to the oxtail. Chicken ginseng soup with some friends. I've never had that soup, but I've heard of it. And it really sounds like so nourishing. I would love to be made that soup one day. Maybe I'll have to try and make it myself though. These are so baby, these Brussels, holy smokes. Okay, I'm not even gonna try to save that one. These were like just a big enough to even harvest, I'm gonna say. This is interesting, Trina. I would be interested to see what you say. Not a fan of the new physicals used to hire employees. One passing over a 20 plus year experience miner who won't destroy. Yes. The equipment on their first day for a kid. Oh, he passed the physical. It's true. I was so shocked. I didn't think it was going to be that intense straight up. But then at the same time, like to the girl that was testing me, I was like, this makes me happy though, because now I know that like all of the staff should be capable of their job. Like, cause there's been so many times where I get up to site and like 
literally the whole time of the rotation, you're doing someone else's job at the same time as yours. And it's so frustrating. So I hope this is going to be different. And this is also not a mine site, which I think is why it's so different because it is um, like an energy company, which I'm assuming is oil, oil and gas. Okay, let me go see my food processor and see what kind of attachments I have. No, we have the shredder, but do we have the slicing blade? I think we might only have the dicer. So then in that case, okay, we have the shredder. Is this thin enough? I think it'll be thin enough. <gasps> this is exciting, chat. This made our life easier. Okay, the first piece I'll bring over is this. We're doing it. It's happening. <laughs> Torino. What is with all these ad breaks? I swear I didn't set this many ads on my Twitch settings. Do I have to check it again? I swear every time it resets its own self. I've seen like 5 billion ads though so far today. Ads make the world go round. Honestly, sometimes they're annoying for me to see all the time though. You better save all of that stuff, Annie. Okay, so this is this. Let's zoom it out more. Setting this beast up. So I just have to switch this out. Does this not go down? There we go. Tallow, yes. That is the name. We're all the way up. Hey, we can just um, shred that right into the bowl that we're gonna make the salad in. Just gotta move all these over to the other side, I think. Move it over. <laughs> you inherited an immersion blender, but it looks kind of sad and tiny. But yeah, you don't have one, so at least you have a start. I think that's the one my parents have too. Those dang kitchen aids, I tell ya. Dreamsicle fudge? Wait, from your friend's candy shop? I'm so intrigued right now. It sounds so good, Dust. It's not too sweet. Okay, when we shred this though, this is gonna literally go flying. So my suggestion is you want to be holding your bowl up to the processor. So you hold the bowl with one hand and you just like put the stuff in with the other. I'll go down this chute so that we don't have to open it. And like the other thing I usually do right away is like load it up now.
It's a chocolate shop. And she like makes the fudge. Yum. Okay, ready? It might be a little loud. <laughs> this looks terrible, but we're just going to do it quick. Flying around. Did you see that? You could shred into something like a stock pot, but then that also means you have to wash that after. And that is not part of my daily task. <laughs> But yeah, usually I shred into like a big container and go from there. I heard something kicking around in there. I'm just going to turn it on one more time. Okay. That looks good though. It worked. And that's how you make your life way easier. And you're baking bread today too, Annie? Okay, first unplug this. Imagine if I unplugged the wrong cord right now, the whole stream would have been gone. Don't unplug the other cord, Kate. Yeah, there's like nothing even left in here. That's amazing. That's why I used this. Yeah, we're going to Annie's for dinner for sure. It's Friday. There's shreddy bits. Easy peasy. Just wiping the rest into the sink. Okay, so you can kind of like fluff them up. Make sure you're happy with how they all got sliced. Mm-hmm. Those will be good. Yep. Okay. There's even Brussels sprouts on the list. Okay, shave Brussels. Let's check on those potatoes. So I know the timer is about to go off in like under 10 minutes, but I don't want them to get overcooked. And like I said earlier, we might have to give them a little like basting. I'll just bring over the trivet really quick. You drank a bottle of wine last night? Like, I'm actually surprised. Because Lily was asking, like, if the garlic's going to get too dark and burn, but it's not. I had a little bit of eggnog last night. Because, well, I knew I passed my, my test. What the heck was that noise? So I didn't have to worry about like having alcohol. Okay, how am I gonna scoop this out? Just like pour it into the spoon. Cause like to me, it does look a little bit dried on top, but they also do look like they're baking really nice. It's getting soft. Hmm. They're shiny again. Mm. 
Wait, what's a Korean style? Like a soup spoon? Like the Asian style of soup spoon, you're saying? I don't know if I know what a Korean style spoon is. Yeah, yeah? A yeah, yeah, yeah? Okay, I have one. I think that looks good though, anyways. We got them re sauced up and then just give it a poke. Okay, so the potatoes are definitely cooked. Potatoes are definitely cooked in there. So all we have to do is cheese them. And I'm just trying to think of how much longer the salad's gonna take to make. All we have to do is slice some apple, grate the cheese for the salad and the potatoes and make a dressing. And that's it. So I'm thinking it'll be about half an hour to finish all those things. So I think I'm gonna leave these out of the oven for a little bit. I suppose though, if they're done early, we could just turn the oven off and keep them warm in there. Heck it, they're going back in for a couple more moments. And then you know what else I'm gonna do is put the chicken in. I'm committing chat. I lit the fire. I'm also gonna turn up the oven temp now because the chicken's gonna cool it off. So up to 425 and then 10 minutes on that. Okay, let's get our apple. I'm just gonna do one apple. And these were honey crisp, I think. If I can remember, the box said it was like a fancy honey crisp style from Costco. And they are definitely tasty. Your bro bought some of those spoons after you mentioned not getting the same kind that you usually do. I actually really enjoy like eating soup with those spoons. <laughs> we didn't start the fire, Annie. So I think the dressing we just like whisked together in a small bowl. And then the apples will leave nice and chunky. I'm hoping they don't turn brown. So I usually cut the apples together like that. And then go back across this way. Hmm. It said like a good sweet and sour apple. And this is it. Definitely something like crunchy and juicy. No red delicious. An apple thief, who did that? Mm. Uh, the amazing. Ginsu name, <laughs> Annie. Okay, apples done. We also have the toasted walnuts, remember? Should we cut those next? I think so. Do you like that much? Yeah, she'll even do your laundry. <laughs> so you choose how chunky you want your walnuts. I know the recipe calls for sunflower seeds, but I've been trying to use up some of the nuts and seeds that I already have around in the house before I buy more for the next year. And walnut and apple is really good together. And same with cheese. 
Okay, have a good walk, Dusty. I gotta do mine later still. I didn't go this morning. How big of a batch of walnuts do I get at a time? I just get the bag from Costco. But I feel like I've had this one for a while now. And I don't want them to go bad. Let me check to see how big it is. Like a kilo, maybe? Or two? Wrong place. 1.36 kilos. Cheese! Ooh, and I'll grab the mustard while I'm back there. Oh, actually, I keep grabbing this one, but the roommate told me to use his first. Grainy mustard for the dressing. Okay, salty aged cheese is what we want for the salad, as well as the potatoes. Parmesan is definitely an option. But if you want to use something like an aged Gouda, like what I'm using, by all means. I've had no issues substituting this aged Gouda in every time it's called for Parmesan. Actually, I'm such a good window cleaner. So I don't approve that message. The Kate model even cleans windows. But it's like in... It's a higher end model, that one, that's all. You find this a hassle to clean, Mr. Krabs? And I just want to see where this rind is. I've always liked using this box grater. Like, I find if you just rinse it off right away after using it, it's not too difficult to clean. I am trying to be careful so I don't hurt my fingies. We want to maximize the amount of cheese we get, though. Before it gets too waxy on the rind, like when it starts to feel like it's hard to grate, that's when you start grating the wax, and that's not tasty. So just discard that. If you want, you can save it. Like, I guess I could have popped that into the broth that's going. But, like, it has some printed stuff on it, and I don't want that to go into the broth. Yeah, maximize your cheese to injury ratio. This smells so good. Aged Gouda is almost like a mix of like Asiago and Parmesan. That's how I feel it smells. I think that's good. We want it both for the salad and for the potatoes. We can sprinkle this over. And I grated it nice and fine because this is a really salty cheese. You don't want to grate it coarse. Yum! A little cheese mountain, if you will. This salad already looks good. With just the apples, nuts, brussels, and cheese. Seriously, looks delicious already. Okay. Potatoes incoming. Listen to this. They're talking. Move over, cheese. Potatoes. That's how I say it, Torino. It can't be undone. Oh no! I lost the little rubber footy to my trivet. I'll just put it on the side for now. Okay, so we're cheesing them. We just basted them a bit ago, and look, they actually look better already. And now, 
we're going to cheese them. I say it that way because of one of my French co-workers that I've worked with in a kitchen before. She is from Montreal and that's how she'd always say potatoes. And so ever since then, I just say it that way. It's my favorite. Okay, they've been cheesed. I think that's enough cheese. No skimping. We'll put those back in because what we set a 10 minute timer and it's almost done. There's only one minute left. Lebanese lentil soup for you and your dad today. No stock, but it turned out good. Yum. I do love lentil soup. The chicken's looking really good too. Okay, I'll do another 10 minutes on the timer. And then we can finish up the dressing, I think. Is that it? The end is near. Apples, cheese, the chicken's baking. Dressing and mix the kale in and the potatoes were cheesed. Easy mode. Okay. What is this dressing? Oh yeah, chat. Someone's got to show the dressing to me. Let me try and copy paste it, but I can't look at the recipe anymore. I'll try and use it on a Google browser instead. Maybe I'll be able to trick it. Who's using it? It's Sam, obviously not me. Maybe that'll trick it. Because Lord knows Sam hasn't used all of his free recipes up. Okay, success. So the dressing. So onion or shallot. I'm just going to do a little bit of onion, like minced small, lemon, garlic, and mustard. And just a little bit of oil. That's it. Shallot, lemon, garlic, mustard, oil. So I have this one plain lemon here, and then we're going to be using Meyer lemon today. Let's get a little cup to mix this in. Maybe I'll just mix it in a little bowl. I do need a whisk. And then I think I'll just use the garlic press to get the garlic done. This soup smells crazy good. I believe that. Yeah, please do post the recipe. Maybe I'll make that when I come back for a salmon myself. Because we were totally eyeing up the oxtail pieces that we saw. Oh no, it begins again. So I've been like trying to document every time that these people go nuts upstairs. Yeah, that whisk has no business being that orange. Okay, so raw garlic is quite strong. So I'm just gonna do the two cloves for the dressing. Hey, Valk, how are you doing? And born in Norway, thank you for the follow. Welcome. We do have a couple Norwegians here. So I hope you enjoy your time. The cookbook is called Nourishing Traditions. Sounds right up my alley. Oh, I almost missed this. Joseph, if I was a sandwich, what sandwich would I be? I'd be a Reuben sandwich. But I'd put my own little spin on it, and instead of just like a plain sauerkraut, I make a beet sauerkraut on the Reuben sandwich. 
Hi, Frank. We finally fixed the commands. Welcome. All of your recipe needs are there. Where's my paring knife? I lost it. Oh, there it is. You have a very controversial question you don't want to ask? Do it. Why are you scared of? Don't worry. I did it, yeah. Success, right? Feels good. Is chat on one today or nah? Nah, chat's been like pretty chill. Cause like we've been talking about some things already that are controversial and it's not really gone too, too haywire. Yeah, are we asking the pineapple on pizza? Don't be scared of that question. That's been asked a billion times here. Okay, so I'm just cutting a little bit of onion. Just like the smallest little slits. You guys know me. I know Sam is the onion hater, but I don't love raw onion too much in dressings. And that way we can just really cut small, small, small pieces just from that front part. Save the rest. If you really love onion flavor being strong, you could use a red onion. But I like it more mild. Is paying for recipes the new new? Like you don't know how you feel about it all? Well, yeah, you know like how I was like trying to get access to that one Bon Appetit recipe? I guess it is. But like, I've already noticed it for at least a year now. That there's some sites that are making you pay. Not all of them, but some of them. What's new, new? Like kind of the new trend, I think she's saying. Like, are we, are free recipe sites gonna not exist anymore, maybe? Okay, is there juice actually left in this lemon? Ooh, there is. Frank, you're gonna stay a while to see if the ads are fixed? Yeah, let me know. Cause I, I redid the settings, but it doesn't seem like it's actually following how I set it. So please do let me know. Cause I have an alert on my side that shows every time an ad pops up and it honestly seems like there's too many still. This Meyer lemon. If you guys have never had a Meyer lemon, it's a cross between a mandarin and a lemon. So it's going to like add some really nice sweetness and flavor into the dressing. I dropped a seed by accident. So I'm not too worried about this making it too acidic. Just no seeds allowed, that's all. You'll put your pirate head back on. <laughs> it is a good thing, Michael. Like as a streamer, that was really starting to stress me out. Okay, I made the lemony mess and then usually I just like rub it all over my hands before I rinse them off. Mmm, it smells so good. That sounds interesting, that fruit. Crazy, really. Okay, so just garlic, onion, and lemon juice. I'm gonna do some whole grain mustard as well as just a little bit of Dijon. You're allergic to citrus? No, that's unfortunate, friend. I'm sorry. All of them are just certain ones. You guys should hear the sounds coming from the oven right now. It sounds insane. All the sizzling and popping. 
do, do, do. There it is. And then some garlicky oils. And then what? Probably just some salt and pepper in the dressing. This is like a really, I would say classic kind of French style vinaigrette. Like obviously you can add more flavoring if you want to it. Like we really only add the mustard so that it helps emulsify everything together, which means the oil and vinegar will be stable and stuck together, not separated. This is roasted garlic oil. Just in the midst of clearing out the fridge since I'm leaving for work for a couple weeks. I thought that would be really good in the salad dressing. So I said, hey, why not? Oh, thank you, Valk. Yeah, I was explaining a little earlier what the test involved because Dust was asking. And yes, I am a little sore, but it's good. Makes me feel healthy. I might just broil this chicken if it's done cooking, but let's see. So I want the pumpkin seeds to go darker. I'm just gonna do a little temp over here. I do have the phone camera. Why does my phone say 10% battery? Is it not charging? Thank you for adding the recipe, Annie. Okay, there we go. I'm just seeing how cooked the chicken is because that's 20 minutes now. So let's go on like the biggest piece. Okay, we are definitely cooked. So let's work, work on crisping up the skin. And I usually just have to do that under the broiler. I've kind of got this oven down pat now. It's like it doesn't brown too much. I have to have it at like 475 if I want to be able to brown things. Otherwise it just roasts really nice. And then, oh my God, look at these. Insane. Those are our Hasselback potatoes. They turned out. So those will stay hot for the moment. Just sitting out while I turn the broiler on for the chicken because we're almost done. We're just finishing up the dressing and then we're ready. So I'll put the broiler on high. Always make sure that your oven rack's at the right spot. Okay. I might need a little bit more oil just to bring this together. Just gonna add some grape seed, I think it is. And then we get to taste it. I've been ready to eat all of this stuff for so long. The hunger is real today. I don't know what it's, that's all about. But let's try our dressing that we made. It's really acidic because there's like no sweetness in it. I didn't think about that side of it. So I'm just gonna do a little dollop of honey. Actually, heck it, I'm doing maple syrup because it's easier to pour when I'm Canadian. My body is preparing for the long winter, right? Really, Frank? As a Swede, you're no stranger to Hasselback potatoes? I didn't know this. What? So Hasselback potatoes are actually from Sweden. So just a little bit of maple syrup teaspoon or so and then let's not forget our seasoning salt and pepper i 
I know I'm excited to go back up to camp and like up my calories again. I really usually eat a lot up there compared to how I eat here. <laughs> I don't have to pay for it. I mean, you guys would too, trust me. Rust. Okay, so that should have balanced it out. Let's see, we can always add more. Mmm. Like the roasted garlic flavor, like the sweetness of the onion a bit. That is delicious. They do have snow up at camp. Yeah, it's completely white. Not as much snow as they should have because you can still see the tundra in some areas. And like that was not the case last year at this time. Last year there was like 12 foot snow drifts everywhere. But they were just wrapping up having like minus five temps at that camp. So it's been very weird. Yeah, mold fish, like we don't have any snow here in Edmonton. It's it's all melted now. It doesn't exist. It's scary. Okay, lastly. Just this. That is our salad. Should I plate it now, maybe? So I'm not gonna dress it all, but I am making like a big one of these for myself to eat. So I was thinking of just putting the kale in the bottom. There's just a peppercorn in my throat, one sec. Ugh. Phew. Crisis averted. You've had like rain. That's insane. No, we haven't had like any precipitation, which I think is actually worse. Cause like we got rocked so hard with the wildfires this last summer. Like we, our ground is ready to be moistened. And that is not gonna happen. This is so nice for getting it 30% off. I'm so happy I picked it. This Swiss chard stem is a little out of control. Yeah, I think that's the same as us. Or we had like one small dump in November or at the beginning of the month and that's it. Is it weird if I just kind of like use my hands and pick it up to place it? I didn't think it would be too weird. Just like a bit of the sprouts, walnut, apple, and cheese. That looks really good. If you want more of it around, you can. Okay, I'm just gonna put that big bowl of it. So I have like two days to eat the rest of that and we'll just dress that small amount. And now that I'm done with that part, let's broil it up. We'll just do this view for now. I'll pop the potatoes back in on the lower shelf so they can stay warm. And then our chicken, just gonna tear off this small piece of parchment that was sticking up so it doesn't like light on fire. Do this. And then I'm just gonna get a fan going so I don't set the smoke detector off. Cause that often happens when you use the broiler just cause it's so much hot air at one time in the kitchen. Yeah. So I always like to do my broiler with the oven door like popped open. But I'm pretty sure the pumpkin seeds won't take very long to toast. Let's 
swiveling the tray because the back of the oven looks really hot compared to the front, just judging by how the parchment is turning brown. <laughs> Let's turn this fan up because holy smokes that puts so much hot air into the house. Oh my gosh. Oh, a little bit more. Okay, I'm running to open a window. Open the door. And then I think when I come back, it's good. Don't burn the nuts or the seeds. F yeah. Yeah, yeah. We did it. And it smells so delicious now. All of the spices you can smell from the pumpkin seeds. Look, look at that. This one. Potatoes. And we're plated. I think we can pour this over now. And it seems like it's staying emulsified with that little bit of mustard we put in. So we can just switch to a spoon. Yeah, this one looks so yummy. Like I said, I don't always love to eat salads, but every now and then I just like get this hankering. And then I always try to like make a different salad. Don't always eat the same one because you'll really get sick of it. Let's save the rest of the dressing for the other part of it. And then for the chicken and potatoes, pretty simple little lunch plate, I'm gonna say. Move that up there. That should be good in this. How am I gonna transfer these potatoes? Maybe just another pair of tongs. Dun, 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 dun. Do we need more light? Why did it get so dark? There they are. Hello there. In all of their glory. Cheesy rosemary roasted garlic Hasselback potatoes. That's a lot to say. We're gonna go with that though. I think that looks good enough to me. One small one, maybe this other little half on the end that's covered in roasted garlic bits. Look at that. Cause like I said, I'm hungry today. Kate's hungry. You prefer the hollaback style of potato? What does that variety entail? Wikuja 2103, thank you very much for the follow. This little chicken thigh is adorable. Okay, don't disturb the crust. That's a pretty beige looking plate, let's be honest. I'm here for it though, because I know how it's gonna taste. And then I'm just gonna pour. What sides should I pour from this one? Has the most foil. Just like a little bit of these juices that are chilling on the tray from the chicken. Cause that looks really tasty. Just like in the center of the plate, not on the chicken or the potato really. Just to have some juicy bits in there.
<laughs> Thanks, Mish, for ruining it. Ruining it. Yeah, of course you need the sauces, right? Because that'll be so good when the potatoes soak that up. Okay, I'm going to take a photo and then I'll go grab a fork. The heck, my phone really is only at 4%. I thought it was on the charger. I shall plug it. The destroyer of <laughs> big goals. <laughs> okay, this, I would say like the salad is almost more uh, the star of the day. It was more about the salad and then just like figuring out what to serve with it. But if we want a photo from over here, we should definitely get one too. Whoa, cookie. <laughs> Turn the lights down, I'm blinded. Val, you asked earlier. I told you my answer. Things have changed. Thank you so much, Cookie. 1999. <laughs> We're going back to 1999. I'm in. Delete Misha of bits. That's so nice of you to ask. Okay, our winter crunch salad. The only thing we changed is the kale because I couldn't find the black kale. And we did walnuts instead of sunflower seeds. Ads are still a thing. I didn't turn them off completely. But I'm definitely not doing the recommended seven minutes per hour that Twitch wants. Because I'm pretty sure I'd start losing money at that point. But let's stir this salad up. Whoa, get it coated in the dressing for a little bit. And then I think we'll come back once it's sat for a minute or two. It was a short ad though. Okay, good. No, no. I needed a bite. What is happening right now? <laughs> you two are out of control and thank you. You know it's not like fake money, right? <laughs> this chicken looks insanely juicy. I don't even know what side I wanted to eat from. The heck, why is there so many tendons in there? I don't wanna eat from that side then. I choose the other side. You just got paid? Well, don't use it all on me. You need money for food still. This is it, it's dripping juices in my hands. Pumpkin seed, crusted chicken. Mm-hmm. The toasty flavor from the pumpkin seeds is so good. And like the little bit of spices, but you mostly still just taste chicken, which I love. Not dry at all, literally like dripping. That's how the bottom looks. We're bussing. Bussing, bussing, bussing.
A 98. <laughs> Kimmers, is this the greatest thing to watch ever? Yes. This is also, like, good. The chicken. Like, dipped with chipotle mayo or something, like, spicy. Always good with it. Like, how many bits did I just get? I can't keep up, but we're now at 59%, so thank you, crazy guys. Okay, hopefully these molten potatoes are cooled down now and we won't just, like, burn our mouth. But this is the most glorious looking bite ever, so this has to be the first one. I got two slices of potato, cheese, a roasted garlic clove, and a bunch of rosemary. Oh. I hate burning my mouth and like anything starchy and sugary always holds the heat, so I call it molten. Same with tomato sauce, right? Mmm. The crunch of the roasted garlic clove. I love it, Mary. You're not controversial at all. I'd be sad if you didn't come in and say it. Merry New Year, Kate and Sam and chat. Merry New Year to you as well, Mary. I hope you and the hubby are doing good. Okay, that was a good potato bite. It might need a little bit more salt, but we can always add that now rather than like it being too salty. Like look at how crispy the underneath of the potato got. Let's see this bite again. It's a big one, actually. There's three slices of potato on this one. Mmm. That bite was better. Mmm. Chat, this is really nourishing. I'm happy this is like one of the last actual meals we cook together. I'm just dissecting my chicken because I don't know what this layer of stuff is. And like I made this menu today by going back into our Discord channel and just searching recipes. I was like, I have chicken, search chicken and see what comes up. Potato, search that. Salad, this is what I got. I don't even know what my meals are going to be because I'm going to a different site. So this will be even more interesting. Yeah, that that is true, Frank. Just brine the potatoes really quick just to even out the salt level. Okay, well, I basically ate half of that plate, so I would say everything is good over there. You're paying for me to eat out? Where am I gonna go? There's nothing around. What did I call it? Like, Poplar something? Did you guys look up where this site was? It's literally in the middle of nowhere in northern Alberta. Oh my gosh, okay. Listen to this, the area that I'm going to. I will be kind of Torino. So 150 kilometers north, or sorry, sorry, sorry. 150 kilometers south of Fort Mac. 
there's 200 square kilometers of leased land that produces 210,000 BPD. That's oil, right? The project started in 2008. In phase one, they produced 3,000 BPD. Barrels a day of oil. This is what I'm reading off of if you want to look it up. Yeah, dude, you used to live up there? Was it called like Poplar Ridge Lodge or something? The area that I'm going to. It's barrels of oil per day. Torino, I'm 100% on your side, dude. You know that. But F me if I'm not gonna make a little bit of money while I can, right? <laughs> That is why I liked being at the mine, because it wasn't part of that side of the energy sector. But this is going to be something new that I feel like I need to see as well. Most of your exciting days was heading to Lac La Biche. Actually, one of my cousins that I'm super close with, I believe that he's also working up at Christina Lake. He's a firefighter for the camp. So I'm trying to get a hold of him to see if he can like come and visit me one day. It's been like really paying off Annie. Like me going up to do this is kind of like a gift to Sam from myself for working hard. I'm gonna make enough money when I go up to pay off his loan when I come home. And that's like one payment a month we don't have to think about anymore. So that's why I wanted to do this. Because spring is going to come quick and I need to do truck stuff. Um, just like a general loan. It's not the car loan. The car is by itself. What? They turn a lake into a highway for the trucks to cut through so they don't have to drive around the island. Okay. I wasn't like saying how this salad was, but it is delicious, you guys. You definitely need all the cheese. And Shroom Girl, I'm sorry I missed your comment. Let me scroll up. Have you read Ducks Two Years in the Oil Sands? No, but I'm gonna write that down. So I wanna read a lot of books in this next year. Um, maybe that will be one of them. So who's going to try making this salad coming up? Because I would definitely recommend it. And yeah, if you don't like kale, just like switch it out for spinach or something else to go with the Brussels sprouts. And if you've never had Brussels sprouts raw, definitely try this. I like how simple the dressing is. I feel like a rabbit sometimes when I eat salad. Frank says, have you tried lightly fried apple slices with curry as a side to like pork chops? Well, I made a dish like not long ago on stream. What did we make? We did a pork roast that had the bones in and then on the side, I made this like roasted apple and onion in olive oil with thyme. 
So it was like very similar to that, just not curry, but that would be delicious. Cause apple and onion and pork, that is such a good combination of flavors. Annie, I was like in this store the other day and I was just like, remember when I used to just get this stuff out of the garden and I didn't have to pay like $8 for a bunch of Swiss chard? I miss that too and I really hope I get back there. I've been watching this girl on YouTube. Her name, I, I don't want to butcher it when I say it because she lives in Portugal, but her name is Eugenia Diaz, I believe. I'm gonna link it. And like they have a full like off grid basically set up in Portugal with a full like garden. And it's so inspiring to watch. I just love it so much. Like just some of the things she says sometimes like really just click. In seven days, you'll have this 69 month badge. Should I like make that something special? <laughs> I wish I could like make it a special badge. Okay guys, that's the stream for the day. I told you it was gonna be quick. Two and a half hours, that's it. I got a couple burpees, excuse me. All the garlic that we used today. What is Bubs doing? All it says on his title is let the chaos begin. And yeah, we'll be back tomorrow. Not really cooking an actual menu of food, but more doing like a prep stream. Cause I'm trying to clear out the fridge before I go. So we're gonna be doing a little bit of cooking, but not making a whole meal. Guys, I don't know where I wanna go raid today. Does anyone have suggestions? Do you wanna go see Pizza Princess G? It looks like they're having fun at the pizza spot. Or should we find someone new? I always have like forget to search with the English tag when I'm like scrolling through food and drink. Did you guys say words? Food vids? Is there even anyone like in the food vids? Or they just like play them? Bubs is game in today, Bog Brush. Okay. And yeah, Sam is feeling better. Thank you for asking. He, out of anyone that got sick, he got, he got better the quickest, which is really good. But like, there's still people that are sick from when he first got sick, which is insane. Hey, the BB Bubs raid is set up, I believe. Woohoo, we did it. Okay, so we'll be back at same time. Today is tomorrow, 11 a.m. Pacific as always. And help me clear out the fridge. It's gonna be fun. I'm excited, bunch of veggie processing and stuff. And we're just gonna make one dessert with the Meyer lemons. Um, a Meyer lemon like loaf, let's say. I called it a cake, I didn't really know. A Meyer lemon loaf that's baked in the same little rectangular pans that we're making or using today. So yeah, stop by for that. And then on Sunday, we're just gonna do a really quick catch up stream IRL. We're gonna go walk outside somewhere. Hopefully the weather is nice and that'll be the weekend guys. So take care. Thank you for being here with me today and just taking your time to spend it here and maybe learn a little bit, get inspired to spread the deliciousness. You love ketchup streams? <laughs> just a ketchup stream. 
What brand is it going to be, though? Okay, let's go see what Bubs is up to on his side. I said they were gaming. Hopefully it's fun. I'm going to send you guys there. If you need anything, you know where to find me. And I'll see you tomorrow. Love y'all. And be safe out there. Bye!